Hello, this is Jill from Paper Daisy Crafting. Thank you so much for joining me today, clicking play on my little video channel. And today our project is this. Now you all know me, I'm a card maker. I make loads and loads of cards. I very rarely make 3D projects. But today is the exception because this is the time of the month when I'm getting ready to send out my customer thank you gifts. And all my customers who've ordered with me, so for July I'm sending out for the customers who shopped with me in June, and all of the customers this month will be receiving a thank you, well, or every month they receive a thank you gift. Um, a thank you card, handmade thank you card, and if they've used my monthly shopping code, they will also produce a, um, receive a free product a product um, gift. It varies what the product gift is. Might be some embellishments, might be ribbon, might be designer series paper, pattern paper, might be one of our tools. Anything can be anything. So it's always a surprise for my customers what they get. Anyway, this was my this was the handmade gift that um, they got this month. Um, I'm hoping by the time this video goes out that they all will have received it, but I'm just waiting to include my catalogues, my Christmas mini catalogues with it. I'm hoping they're going to be here any day so I can send this out. Um, anyway, it's these little boxes here. I've got a little bit of stamping on them, just a tiny bit of cardstock that you need, and then inside is a little tea light, um, and they, they're smelly ones, so they, these are mango, these ones. Um, and then on top... I've just done a daisy with our medium daisy punch and the centre of the daisy, which I found a really great stamp to use for that, a stamp and a die, which comes in this set, which is new to me. I haven't used it very much at all yet, but I have noticed that this one. And so I've used that little stamp there to stamp my centres of my daisies and it's great. It's just right. It's just what you need. So anyway, let me show you how to make these little boxes. Very, very simple. Should the dimensions should work for most tea lights unless they're deeper than these ones. So you need to measure the depth. These ones are just under one and a half centimetres, so they're about one one point three centimetres. So if yours are any deeper, you will need to uh, um, rejig the measurements a little bit. And to do the stamping on them, I'm using Versamark which is a clear stamp, but it will give me like a watermark effect. It will look like the same, I've used the same colour ink on here, whatever colour I'm doing. And the stamp that I'm using is another one from this, you know this is one of my favourite sets from the catalogue, just using this one today. So, so far I've used these, I've used these, I've used this, haven't used this yet, and I haven't used this big flower, and that's coming next. That's going to be one of my next projects. Right, so first of all, oh, cardstock, um, the card stock you need, any colour you like, I'm using all brights for mine. I've done them all in all the brights. Um, and it's 12 and a half centimetres by seven centimetres or two and three quarter inches by five. And we're just going to use this stamp to stamp all over our cardstock just to give it a little bit of interest. Um, you could make these boxes out of um, designer series paper or pattern papers. You could easily do that. Um, but I decided I was just going to do it in the brights colours, build up a kind of rainbow with them. And I hope by the time you're watching this video, I hope my customers have all received them and I hope they like them. Um, they're quite nice to, to gift on if, you, if it's not something for you. They're quite nice little gifts to have handy. Maybe when you go for a dinner party or something like that, you've got a little gift to take the hostess. Right, there we go. Now I'm going to bring in my trimmer because we're going to do some um, scoring. And these days I hardly use to, need, seem to use my scoreboard because I use my trimmer all the time for scoring. It's why this is such good value for money because you can score. Right, so I'm going to have it with the long side going across here first of all. And I'm going to score at one and a half. So I'm actually going to use this measurement here rather than on this side. So I'm going to line it up to one and a half there and score. And then I'm going to flip it round and carry on and score at five and a half. and seven and eleven so that was one and a half five and a half seven and eleven and then you're going to flip it around to this way and we're going to do one and a half on each side so I'm going to do it one and a half here 
and again I'm using this measurement rather than this one and again and do it one and a half on this side and you know what's coming next if you've watched any of my videos making these um, it's going to be burnishing so we're going to burnish all of those scores score lines just to make sure we've got nice crisp edges And one of the things I'm going to do on this one, which I didn't do on all the ones I made before, all of my samples, is on the lid here, I'm going to take a little circle punch. Now, we're not selling all of these circle punches anymore, so you may need to find something in your stash that you can use. But I've still got a, a half inch punch, which is from a while ago. And I'm going to put a little thumb indent in here so it makes it easier to open. So maybe see if you, it's not essential, none of the, none of these ones, this, this one had a very slight one because that was the only the place the punch would fit, but the others the punch wouldn't fit. So the yellow one hasn't got a thumb, but it's still open. So that's not essential, just a nice touch. Right, okay, so now we're going to take our snips, if I can find them, there we are. And we are going to know, I had a template here somewhere, if I can find it quickly. What have I done with my template? No, I can't find it, so I'm going to have to remember what I did. I made these a while ago, so it could go all gloriously wrong, but let's try it. Right, okay, so I'm going to snip. Up all the score lines. like so and I'm then going to wedge the little tabs so all the little tabs are going to be wedged so not the panels in between just the little the little tabs and that just means they won't poke out and be have little edges when we put it together there we go like I say I'm not a I'm not a huge 3D project maker. I tend to only make 3D projects if it's something I really need, so like my customer gifts. I don't tend to make them very often just for the sake of making them. Um, right, okay. So to put it together, I'm going to bring in our new seal. I've got some new seal. Now I've got seal plus and seal. So should we use seal plus? Just because that might be a little bit stronger. So it's kept in this resealable bag because in, it just protects it if you're in a very hot or a very cold environment. It just helps to protect it and keep it nice. So you might want to keep yours in there. It's got a, um, a lid on there. Right, okay, I haven't used this on a product. I've had a little play with it, but I haven't used it on a project before. So I'm going to... It's a good start. There we go. Put a little bit on there and a little bit on there. And then I'm just going to bring, yeah, there's not, not any, there's no, oh, cardstock stuck to, oh, that's interesting, the cardstock's actually stuck to the seal. Let's go on a bit and do a bit more. Oh, well that's not very good, the, the seal is actually ripping my cardstock and it's sticking, oh there we go, got it going, it was sticking to the, the cardstock was coming off um, on the seal rather than the other way round. Right, okay, we've got it on there now. So I do find these tape runners take a little bit of getting used to. I rarely, I rarely use them. I'm not really a very good advocate for them because I don't use them a huge amount. It's working perfectly now though. And if you, any of you used um, Fast Fuse, you'll notice you don't really need to do that flick at the end that we used to have to do with Fast Fuse. It does just break off quite easily. Right, so that's the base of our box made. Just put that in there, like quite nice. And then the lid is just gonna fold over like that. So we just need these two little tabs now. No, didn't come out. Maybe I'm not pressing hard enough. No, it's still taking the there we go. 
hmm, I'm going to have to have a bit of a play with this this um, seal just because if I can get it to work a bit better. Because at the minute, I'm having to say, maybe not designed to use on tiny tabs like I'm using it. Right, there we go, and that's our box made. Nice little box. Now to decorate it, I took our medium daisy punch and I punched out two daisies. So, one, two. And I'm gonna take my bone folder and just curl the, the petals up a little bit with carefully with my bone folder, just to give it a bit of dimension. Although it'll probably get flattened in the post anyway, but hey ho, I can but try. Anyway, there we go. And that's going on there. Just I'm going to use a little bit of Tombow to glue that on there. And the reason I'm using Tombow is because I want to be able to move it if it's not quite in the right place to start with. There we go. And then actually it'd be better to use the other end of the Tombow, wouldn't it? Let's put that lid on there. This would be better. Except I've had it upside down, so now it's not there. There we go. And now what we're going to do is try and get those petals in between each other. And you have to line it up quite carefully. So just take a minute. That's why you need what, um, liquid glue, because then it will give you a chance to wiggle about with them. There we go. I think that's fine. Maybe all oh, good. There we go. Now, the, the um, centre... You can see where I've die cut them all out of here. So here, this is the stamp, this little, this little stamp here, this one. And then there's a little die that cuts it out. So I've already, there's one I'd stamped onto the yellow, the Daffodil Delight. And I've already put, die cut one, ready to put in the center of my daisy. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue and then literally we are done. They are very quick to make these, um, but I hope they will be well received. There we go. And then we've just got to pop in our nightlight and there we are. So you could take the nightlight out and add a little bit of jewellery or something to these. They could be little jewellery boxes, couldn't they? So we've got a whole collection of colours here. Like I said, I've made them in most of the brights colours. Um, so I hope you like my project today unusual for me like I say 3d if you want to purchase any of the products I've used Bright's cardstock the field of flowers stamp but any any little stamp would do you wouldn't need to have that it might be one from your stash um, the what's some whisper white and the medium daisy punch and then my middle you don't need to use this for your center if you don't have that stamp set and you're not thinking about buying it you might be able, just a circle of yellow in the middle there would be fine you could even add some dots with a marker pen so i hope you've enjoyed that today please get in touch if there's any way i can help at all um and i will see you soon thanks for watching Bye bye